South Carolina Gamecocks is Final Four bound. In this special edition of Quentin's Post Ups, I sit down with Sports 4 weekend anchor, Darren Stokesfitz. Here we sit at ABC News 4 Studios in Mount Pleasant. And I just have to start off with the obvious. 44 years without an NCAA tournament win. Four wins in nine days. Gamecocks are Final Four bound for the first time in program history. Where does your mind go to? It is incredible. I mean, to think about not only just for South Carolina as a university, but this state has never put a team in the Final Four, and now the Gamecocks are going to be the first in the men's bracket to do that. Uh, it's incredible, and I think over the long tenure of that program, they've had some success, but they went so long without getting that tournament win. Then they went back-to-back -back games in Greenville, who hadn't hosted NCAA games in forever. Then they went back-to-back -back games in Madison Square Garden in New York City. Now they're going to be in the Final Four in Phoenix. Unbelievable turn of events. Walk me through what's going to happen in Phoenix. Uh, well, four teams obviously playing for a national championship. It's kind of like the college football playoff setup. You have four teams each playing a semifinal game and then the two teams playing a championship game. But Saturday night in Phoenix in the same building actually where Clemson won in the Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State. Right. During football season, South Carolina will play Gonzaga. And then in the nightcap, it'll be either North Carolina and Kentucky. They're playing. Whoever wins that game wow. will play Oregon, who hasn't been to the NCAA Final Four in the men since the first year they had the Final Four. Mm -hmm. So 70 plus years for Oregon, Gonzaga's never been there, South Carolina's never been there, mm -hmm. and then North Carolina or Kentucky, whoever goes, they're always there. Yeah. So it'll be certainly a contrast of fan bases and uh, a heck of an experience, and Sports 4 will have it covered, I'm sure. It's exactly. Describe to me the South Carolina Gamecocks right now. Uh, red hot. I mean, mm -hmm. Frank Martin has been to the Elite Eight before with uh, Kansas State back at his old school, uh, but obviously the Gamecocks have never even come close to this. This was their first Elite Eight, now it's their first Final Four. He's pushing the right buttons, and with Frank, he said with Kansas State, he pushed his team too hard in practice before that Elite Eight game. So he learned from the last trip. Now he's got them focused. They still feel like they're the underdogs, and they have something to prove. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I mean, they're a seven seed. Seven seeds don't make it to the Final Four right. often, but it's two games. Two games between them and a national championship. Wow. Somebody else, uh, which is a team that is to have something to prove right now, is the South Carolina Gamecocks women's basketball yeah. team. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, Elite again, they actually won over Quinnipiac 158. Yeah, they rolled. And Quinnipiac was a 12 seed. No 12 seed has ever made it to the Elite Eight in the women's tournament. Mm -hmm. South Carolina has been to the Elite Eight three times for the women. So uh, this would not be as far as they've been. They went to the Final Four a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, but them being a one seed and playing all the way out in Stockton, California, right. which is crazy, uh, they're proving something yet again. They're proving mm -hmm. that they're a program on the rise, and whether it's UConn and everybody else for women's basketball is still yet to be seen. No, right. Nobody can play with them so far, uh, but tomorrow they have a big chance to beat Florida State, go back to the Final Four in Dallas and uh, see what happens. I mean, how big would that be for Gamecock fans to have the women in the Final Four and the men in the Final Four in the same year? Yeah. Uh, incredible, incredible. You talked about Red Hot earlier. Let's yeah. go up the road. Obviously, Clemson baseball, my league, yeah. my league, that is, are doing well. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are off to a hot start. And the Gamecocks are off to a hot start, too. i got to catch myself because okay. I was looking at their schedule, and they've won two SEC series in a row and I think nine of ten games. So they're hot, too. But what Clemson is doing is incredible. They've won 15 straight games away from Doug Kingsmore Stadium. That's a program record. They've right. never done that before. Uh, they've won 18 of their last 20 games, I believe, and they're – Eight and one in ACC play. I mean, they are playing at such a high level. I mean, we could be talking about South Carolina or Clemson right. playing in Omaha for, right. for baseball national right. championship, which Coastal won last year. So yeah. uh, it's just it was incredible to see Monty bring that team to Charleston last week and play against the college mm -hmm. at his old stomping grounds uh, to watch Clemson play. They're really good. The yeah. offense this year is just at another level. And Seth Beer, uh, probably the best player in college baseball again. He's just phenomenal. But uh, they're red hot too. I mean. Uh, we've got athletics out the ears in South Carolina right now, and the Gamecocks are coming to the Citadel Tuesday, right. so that'll be fun, too. Uh, get a good chance to see them in the low country as well. You know, I interviewed Matt Roberts for Clinton's Full Subs, I guess, on Friday, and, you know, he basically talked about Earl Grant and obviously mm -hmm. their re-NIT appearance. But what do you expect from Earl Grant when you look at the next season? Uh, I thought this year, and it's, it's no slight to the players or how they, how they performed this year, I thought they were a year away from reaching their peak. And that's mm -hmm. just to say, I expect even more out of them next year. Uh, with Kevin Keats at UNC Wilmington, he's the head coach taking the NC State job. They graduated a lot of players. Mm -hmm. Earl's going to have a lot of seniors, and he didn't really lose any key contributors. Plus, he gets to recruit some more players. So, I mean, you're adding to the mix some, some really good talent 
that's going to make things interesting. And I've covered the CAA, their conference, for a long time. I covered them in Virginia for three and a half years, covered them here for three and a half years. That league is always dominated by teams that have upperclassmen, seniors. Mm. Next year, Earl's going to have a ton of seniors, guys who went to the NIT, right. who went to the CAA championship right. game. Uh, and I think they're going to win more games than they did this year. So uh, the, the tournament is back at the North Charleston Coliseum, which, again, gives them kind of a home court advantage. So expectations for Earl are going to be sky high in year four. Uh, let me get back to Columbia because I want you to write the headline. The South Carolina Gamecocks will. Uh, I don't know. I guess that's a tough one. You always throw a curveball to it. <laughs> I think they will represent South Carolina well. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they can go out and win against right. Gonzaga or beat North Carolina, right. Oregon, or Kentucky, whoever they play. I don't know if they can win a national championship, but I think the way that they will play in at least the semifinals and maybe the semifinals and the finals, they're going to make the Palmetto State proud. The game, the way they play the game is so different from a lot of teams. It's that tough physical defense, and that's the old cliche, defense wins championships. So. Gonzaga, not from a great, strong conference. Right. They're battle-tested, of course, but so South Carolina. So of the four teams that are going to be in Phoenix, I like their chances. So we'll see what happens. That, that championship, if we could get a Carolina-Carolina championship and right. just settle this, yes. who gets to be Carolina, <laughs> that's, all, that's all it'll take. That, that'd be a lot of fun. Though. It'll be very interesting. Uh, well, Darren Stoltz, first, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Absolutely. Quentin, good to see you. Likewise.